Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I've got a video for you about an embarrassing health problem of mine. It's not going to be the kindest, greatest, or most uplifting of videos, but I do hope that some of you learn something from it. And one of the key reasons that I'm doing this is it's kind of a rare problem, and I hopefully inspire some of you to get checked and get this taken care of. And before there's too many weird questions in the comment, the shirt says, Obama turned my frog gay with chemicals. Not really a particularly political one, just been watching too much internet comment etiquette and going in a little bit too deep with the Alex Jones memes. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's not really something I wanted to talk about, but it's something I should talk about. And we're going to start with what was going wrong and how I noticed it and what it was and the treatment, etc. Sort of like a story. You may have noticed me behaving poorly in the last six to eight months, maybe a year or maybe more. My streams have become more negative, I've been more angry, I lose my temper on stream far more often than I ever did in the past. Uh, I got extraordinarily angry at clickbait such that I, I, well, I punched a brick wall until it cracked a bone and I still have scars on my hand. Uh, I talk trash to people on Twitter more than I should. I've been a little bit less than kind in my business email to some of the choosing beggars that show up to demand free stuff. And all of this hasn't done any wonders for my brand image. It's made me look uh, petty, childish, angry, pitiful, uh, a lot of little things like that. And at home, just here off the internet, my health hasn't been tremendously better. Actually, that's an understatement. It's been, it's been very poor for the most part. Probably just as bad as it was during the worst of the Zoloft withdrawals, or at least comparable. Overall, here in-house with friends and family, I've been pervasively negative, angry, uh, bitter all the time. I've been uh, picking small fights with my wife when I really shouldn't. Unable to let things go is a big one. I fixate and focus really hard on things. Uh, spiral out of control. As you can tell, a lot of this is mental problems. I've had a lot of problems with social interaction. It's been very hard for me to talk to people. It's been very hard for me to like look at faces and do anything out in public. I, I shut myself in really, really hard. Uh, super sensitive to loud noises, which we've talked about here on the channel before, is that loud noises because of my childhood spook me. Uh, sudden noises spook me. Loud things are painful to my ears, and I've always been a little sensitive to that, but it's been a lot more extreme lately. Uh, I've also had disturbances in sleep and energy. I've kind of swapped between no energy and sleeping for days to just just like the man Johnny on the spot, super caffeinated, awake for two to three days. I don't drink caffeine. It's just, it was very, very manic, super energetic, happy, hyper, playful, motivated, sometimes uh, in, a, in a very stupid way. I would buy expensive things that I shouldn't. I would commit to things that I, I shouldn't. Uh, work myself into the ground. Usually this is when I would do videos, is when I'm feeling very manic, very out and about and kind of with it. Uh, and that's obviously very bad to cycle between, you know, low energy, depressed, stay in bed, to so energetic you are making poor decisions. And the biggest issue, which a lot of this flowed from, is that I was just angry about 90% of my day. Almost all day, every day, angry. Angry, 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 angry. And I would wake up at almost maximum anger, just almost at the maximum amount of anger that I could hold without bursting. I would just wake up with that every morning. So obviously this isn't sustainable. Uh, it, it was so bad that I kind of lost perspective on my own behavior to a degree I knew something wasn't right but I didn't have the same perspective of how bad wrong it was I started thinking about things and treatment and what could possibly going wrong and I thought that it could be long-term side effects of withdrawing from SSI medications which uh, about a year or two years ago I quit cold turkey very stupidly me it could be a natural aging process one of the unfortunate things about my genetics is that both on my mother's side and father's side all of my immediate family members got bad mental disorders as they aged. Their mental health went down very quickly, even in the early 30s, 40s, 50s. And uh, one of the more common ones is that they would get angrier as they get older. Also potential diabetes, thyroid problems, pituitary, a lot of this is in my family as well. Uh, I thought that I could be developing bipolar disorder, which would explain the crazy cycling of energies, or maybe I had a brain tumor or uh, some sort of cancer that was causing this, which is known. And uh, a lot of different random stuff, and, and very relevant to this story, J-Hub recommended that I get my uh, testosterone and estrogen levels checked because his brother had similar problems and they were out of balance. So it's like, all right, maybe I have a, maybe I have a testosterone problem. We'll add that to the list. 
It took me a long time, but I was finally able to go see a doctor. I mean, it literally took four ever uh, because the insurance system in America is, is, is broken. Most of you probably have insurance either through your parents or through your job. If you're self-employed, you have to buy your own insurance through an HMO. Uh, HMO is kind of the same as Medicaid, Medicare, uh, but a private one is usually worse than Medicaid, Medicare, and it's really hard to go see specialists or get treatments without being referred from your primary doctor. The deductible is super high. The insurance company actually would not tell me who my primary doctor was. And I had to call a friend who works in the industry to pull data on his end so that I could get to go see a doctor. Uh, the initial diagnosis at the doctor's office was bipolar disorder. And I fit all the criteria of being bipolar disorder. Spoilers, that wasn't it. I'm not bipolar. But she wanted to do some other tests as well to rule out tumors and other problems. And uh, I asked to put the testosterone test on there too, just to be sure. And you can probably see where this story is going. Uh, but even though I played by the rules of the HMO and I stayed in network and got the referrals or whatever, it still cost me about $1,500 to get my medical checkup. Uh, it was about two types of blood work and I saw a doctor two or three times and that was $1,500. The insurance initially uh, offered coverage and then changed their mind and they don't cover the medication and they're difficult to work with and they lied to me. And I absolutely hate Blue Cross Blue Shield of Texas, the worst insurance I've ever had in my life. I would not feel bad if their building caught on fire and burned down. Obviously, when nobody's there, I don't want anybody to get hurt. Uh, so the good news is, I don't have cancer. I don't have a brain tumor. I, I'm not going to be doing chemo or anything crazy like that. I don't have thyroid problems. I don't have diabetes. Every single thing in my body actually came back normal or better than normal, healthy, average. You're, you're good to go, except, this is the embarrassing part, I had super low testosterone, not kind of low, not lower than average, but like almost no testosterone kind of low. I was sitting on about 5% of normal, like insanely low testosterone, such that the amount of testosterone I have is about what like a 90 year old man should have, which is kind of crazy. And for me, this is super embarrassing after taking years of crap about training stuff, which was uh, largely... Uh, to do with eight thoughts and I'm supposed to go on his podcast tomorrow. So this will be a fun, this is recorded probably this will probably come out after the podcast. So it'll be a fun topic of discussion there. Um, it, it was I don't know I got sensitive to it and I overreacted and that made it a big thing in my channel. Now it's basically a meme that I'm a tranny or I'm a woman in disguise or something like that. And I know that even just saying that my medical problem is low testosterone or basically almost no testosterone inevitably in the comments there's going to be thousands of comments about beta male about how i was secretly transitioning and changed my mind about how you obviously knew the whole time just by looking at me because you've never seen a bigger pansy beta whatever uh i'm sure there'll be tons of fun gay jokes to deal with even though that doesn't really have anything to do with your testosterone but uh, a lot of a lot of fun things i'm going to take some l's on this it's embarrassing and it sucks and that's why i haven't said anything for almost two months now so, of course, I went to go see more doctors and more specialists and uh, come back for further uh, testing and follow-up and whatever. The first doctor I saw made me super mad. Uh, he did not take the problem seriously and told me that, uh, what did he say correctly? He said I have low testosterone because I smoke marijuana. And I'm like, dude, I smoke weed a couple times a year when I go to California. And he's like, that's all it takes. It'll ruin your testosterone and make you infertile and all this kind of uh, stuff. And he was like, yeah, you should just quit smoking weed completely. And I'm like, all right, I haven't smoked in like two, three months, Let's go, whatever. Uh, and he's like, oh, you need to exercise every day and eat a lot of meat. I'm like, that's, that's your official advice? You got, a, you got a medical degree for that? Thanks, bro. And he just kind of shooed me out. Now, I would later come back to the same doctor. He called me the very next day because while I was there, they took some blood work. And he called me the very next day and uh, wanted a follow-up appointment. And basically, they checked it and found out that my testosterone was even lower than it was at the other facility. And I think what happened is I went in there in like gym shorts and just workout clothes because I went in like right after working out. That's just how it panned out that day. And uh, I come in there and I'm like, yeah, you know, I do all this and smoke weed and whatever. And he's like, oh, look, it's a it's a skinny stoner that wants to uh, scam me into getting testosterone injections so he can buy, you know, build big muscles or sell it to other meatheads or something. So uh, the second time around took me much more seriously. 
and I was eventually prescribed some very simple over-the-counter stuff to raise testosterone. Just little pills you take, nothing really fancy or complicated. Uh, no injections, no big boy stuff, and so far it seems to be working, but that's, that's, that's one step ahead. The problem with all this is that it's really weird, right? Like, other than the lack of beard, and I know you're going to make jokes about feminine features, common low testosterone problems are small body size, low sex drive, low energy, generally very passive behavior. Aggression is not normally what you're looking for. I'm over six foot tall, 200 pounds. Uh, sex drive is uh, plentiful, I assure you. Energy higher than most people, depending on what you know cycling you're doing. And it's a very angry, aggressive, uh, challenging behavior most of the time when I couldn't control myself. So the symptoms that I had would be the opposite. It would be like crazy high testosterone. It was like a roid rage kind of guy. And even the doctor said that the symptoms that I'm having, the reason that I came, don't match the problem at all. However, everybody's body is different. And it's not necessarily that high or low estrogen causes or testosterone causes different things, but rather that when your body gets out of balance, bad things happen and different bad things happen to different people. In a way, it makes sense to me. This is a problem that I could have had my whole life. I've pretty much always had no beard. What you're looking at right now is, uh, uh, it's a little different now, probably about three, two days of no shaving. I kind of lost track of when it was. That, that's, I don't really grow beard hair. It never really did ever. I thought, my fa it wasn't really big in my family, so I just thought, eh, maybe I got good genes. I don't have to shave, whatever. I've always had bigger thighs, always had moobs. Uh, I never got male pattern uh, balding yet. That's changing fast. And for all I know, low testosterone could have been a problem my entire life. I've always struggled with issues of anger and uh, depression and uh, sleep disorders and stuff like that. And I, obviously terrible environments and stuff can cause that, but possibly low testosterone? I really don't know. Uh, but the treatment's just little over-the-counter pills. They're designed to boost testosterone levels over a couple of weeks, months, whatever. I've got a follow-up appointment when I kind of run out of this prescription to check. And so far, they seem to be working well. My mind is overall clearer and more focused than it has been in, honestly, years. Not that I'm perfect or cured or that everything's fine. I've got plenty of problems still, but I can feel my... I can literally, feel, like, feel it in my head that I'm thinking more, clear, more clearly. Uh, seems to be getting basically better every day with clarity sleep normally for the most part every day i have about the same energy level without a lot of up and down less noise problems still have noise problems less angry but still angry and you know there's still rough moments i think i'm going to upload a rough moment from a stream called tell me how you really feel in a bit but there's generally less of that and everything seems to be getting better um as i'm i assume my testosterone is levels are going up because i have a follow-up in a couple of weeks and I hope that I'm not getting placeboed. I hope that I'm not just fooling myself or I change my environment or something with the meds. I, I do think they're working because there have been some very noticeable downsides in my body. So I don't have a lot of beard hair, right? What I do have has been growing about 10 times faster than normal. I used to shave like every two weeks, no joke. Shaving was a bi-monthly event. Now it's every three or four days. I'm not getting a lot of new hair, though new hair on my face is growing. Generally just what I have is growing faster. And unfortunately, the hair on top of my head has started to thin. Alopecia, male pattern baldness. Gotta love it. Some of that might just be naturally aging as I'm a little bit older than I appear to be. Uh, but it started almost immediately after taking the pills. Now to be fair, I'm not balding. It's not falling out. It just, it started to thin a little bit. But before there was no thinning. It was like zero before and now there's thinning. So that's probably happened. And the biggest and most noticeable thing is I'm gaining insane weight. You're about to see a chubby drifter in the future and I know it. I've gained 10 pounds this month and I'm now heavier than I've ever been in my life. I promise you it's not muscle, it's pretty much all fat. And this is even with diet and exercise. I go to the gym four days a week, I freaking calorie count and I, I try to stay on top of this diet thing and not eat too bad. And I'm still packing on pounds like crazy. I feel like every time I take one day off and eat a cupcake, I just gain the whole cupcake. I've had days where I gained like three pounds in one day, not just water weight, like permanent weight. Just, it's been, it's been crazy and I'm just packing on pounds like mad. So I assume with faster hair growth, uh, some less hair here and more weight, that it's not just my imagination and that the testosterone levels are changing. And as much as that's not going to be great, I would much rather be a fat, bald guy with a clear mind than as I am now, but completely stark, raving mad. So then we finally get down to the end of the video. 
And uh, the question you probably want to ask is, why in the hell would you even share this on YouTube? This is so personal, so private, so honestly embarrassing and, and, and damaging to your brand and all this kind of stuff. Like, why, why even talk about this? Why not just keep it to yourself? I've got two reasons. Number one is that I run this channel as an extension of who I am as a person and not as a character. I don't run this channel as, uh, for example, PewDiePie. PewDiePie as a person doesn't communicate with his girlfriend and his wife in the same way that he communicates in videos. Some people do characters, some people are people. I do the people. I try to be myself and be authentic and just be normal here. And I'm pretty open about a lot of stuff. Have been for a long time, and it's kind of what my fans have come to expect, so I'm just continuing with that trend. And secondly, and the bigger reason, the one that I've thought about for a long time, is that I hope that somebody else has experienced these same problems that I have, the same symptoms, something they've noticed something is wrong and they haven't quite been able to put their finger on what. And I'm really hoping that somebody out there, th this is like rung a bell with somebody, and that person decides to get checked and they notice that their uh, testosterone or estrogen levels are low or something with the hormones in their body, ooh, I'm burping here in my own commentary, <laughs> are out of balance. And if only one person gets checked and helps themselves, if, if only just the tiniest number of people this applies to, and they actually go see a doctor and this turns out to be their problem and it significantly improves their lives, then this video will be worth all of the L's, all of the tranny jokes, all of the gay stuff, all of the beta male stuff, and all of the continually perpetuating a meme that drives me crazy. I'm just going to take those L's and I'm going to deal with that and I'm going to call it a win if any one of you gets any help in any capacity whatsoever. And if you do have symptoms like mine, I'd recommend you give it a go because maybe you have low testosterone, even if you don't fit the normal criteria. Maybe uh, your body's just out of balance, as mine was. And hopefully, when I go see the doctor in a couple weeks, uh, everything has improved and we can continue on this path and everything will be great. I'm kind of terrified if uh, that's not the case, but we will find out. And guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.